All right, today we're gonna to be talking a little bit about conduit bending. Uh, we're gonna be talking about the three-point saddle. Uh, next time, next video we'll do, we'll do a four-point saddle right now, but we'll do a, a three-point saddle video right now. So, all right, uh, so an important thing when you're doing uh, bending is uh, just to remember the degrees that you're doing when it comes to bending. So you're gonna be doing, uh, again, especially for these, you gotta remember your degrees that you're gonna be doing. So again, some of the most common degrees that we use is a 22, we use a 30, and we use a 45 degree. Now. Uh, all these degrees are probably the most common. We do have other degrees that we use, but these are the ones that we use quite a bit. If you can get away with knowing these, you'll be okay knowing how to bend conduit. So again, remember this. Now, they, there is two things that you guys gotta remember. One is called a multiplier. The other one's called the shrinkage. These are two of the things that you gotta do. That's, that's about as basic as you can get. Uh, so again, uh, for the 22, your uh, multiplier is 1 point, uh, I mean 2.6, sorry, 2.6. And your shrinkage is, uh, three sixteenths and then for your 30 your multiplier is two and then your shrinkage is a quarter and then for your 45 is 1.4 and your shrinkage is three eighths so again these are the only things you really have to remember they're really pretty easy to uh to remember uh, all this stuff i can make my two look a little bit nicer uh 2.6 uh so again these are the only things you have to remember so uh, when you're doing any type of bend, you have to remember the height. Again, uh, uh, well, you have to do, you have to know the height of the obstruction. So let's say right now your conduit, they come in uh, ten piece, uh, ten foot pieces. Again, they're nice and straight. So we, and again, sometimes you come into obstruction. Let's say you, uh, uh, we decide to do a, a, a we're going to do a round obstruction. So here you have the round obstruction. So that means my conduit has to come here. And again, you don't want to do no four point saddle because it looks kind of weird to do something like that on a on on a on a round object. So you wanna make sure you do a uh, three point option. So again, uh, op uh, 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 bend like there for the obstruction. It looks a little bit cleaner, looks a little nicer. Now, uh, when it comes to the three point saddle, you wanna measure from the center of the obstructions. You wanna make sure you measure from the center. Later on when we do the four point, uh, we measure from the edge of it. So for right now, we're gonna do a, a three point uh, so again, first you have to find the obstruction. So let me let me get an obstruction here real quick. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, measure the obstruction. Uh, again, another thing that we do have to get is the distance. So let's just put it, uh, for now, let's just go 20, 24 inches, just for, so we guys will know what we're talking about. So we're gonna go ahead and mark. That way you'll know the obstruction. Again, the obstruction, once it's there, you really don't move it. So right now, this guy is gonna go at 24 inches right there. So if we can get it to stay. All right, so 24 inches, that would be my obstruction. That would be my center of obstruction, right about there. Now, I have to measure my height. It's very important that we get a good measurement from your height. So here I'm looking at, at two and a half. So two and a half is my height. So here it's very important that I write this down. So height, so my height was uh, two and a half. Again, I'm gonna be using that. That's again, that's one of the most important things you're gonna be needing. So uh, we did say our distance from here to the edge was 24. So we're gonna write that down right there, 24 inches. Now, uh, again, if you guys remember, uh, uh, every time, it's kind of like an accordion. Whenever you're bending a, p a piece of conduit, when you do this, the inside has a tendency to come in. It collapses a little bit. So you gotta take that into account. You gotta take that, that's called the shrinkage. We take the shrinkage to account or else your, your bend is gonna be a little bit off. So it becomes very important that we do the shrinkage. And here's the formula. So all you gotta do is do this. Height times uh, shrinkage is the very first one, and then height times multiplier. Now we did find the height. We saw the height of the obstruction. All obstructions are gonna be different depending on what you're gonna come up with. Uh, half inch conduit, three quarter, uh, four, whatever, it, uh, uh, whatever it's gonna be, it's gonna be a different height. So ours just happens to be two and a half inch. I can, <clears throat> so I'm gonna put this in, two and a half, for the air and two and a half for here. So on the shrinkage, it's the only time on the shrinkage, we always go, uh, we always round up. So this guy is actually gonna be changed out to three. So, because we're rounding up for only for this, but again, the actual is two and a half. So, uh, so and then my shrinkage, according to what we found, I'm sorry, we didn't pick a degree. Let's go ahead and go with, uh, let's go. Again, normally we go with a, a, a three point saddle. We normally use a 45 degree here and 22. 22, so that's what, so 22 and a half and 22 and a half will give you that 45 right there. So we're gonna go ahead and use the, this one right here, 22 uh, and a half uh, and a 45. So if, even though we call the bend a 45 degree bend, we use the, the two outside ones right there. So uh, if this was 30, we would use 15. If this was uh, uh, 90, we would use 45. If it was 60, we would use 30 and so on and so on. Make sense? 
So we use the, these two that bring it back into this right here. So uh, for 22, since we're using this one right here, it would be, uh, my trinkets would be uh, 3 sixteenths. So three times, because uh, remember we rounded up, three times uh, three sixteenths would, uh, would be nine sixteenths, right? So that is, that is my, uh, what we're, uh, we're gonna be using. So we're gonna be adding a uh, nine sixteenths to 24. So now this length, before it was uh, 24 here, now uh, it's gonna be 24 and nine sixteenths. And now I can mark my conduit. I can get, uh, I can go over here and actually mark my conduit at uh, 24 and nine sixteenths. So uh, uh, right there. Uh, again, uh, you have, uh, uh, you can go your 16th, uh, it's uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, uh, uh, so 8, 9, 10, 11, so it goes 16 of them right there. Uh, the big ones, uh, again, uh, the big one right there is your half, uh, your full, then your half, then your uh, your quarters, uh, your uh uh, your three eighths and uh, your uh, so your eight your eights and your sixteen sorry uh, that's what you're gonna be uh, that's how those divide right there so all right so I already marked it here at twenty four and uh, nine sixteenths that is my first mark so that is this mark right here now I gotta get my so this would be considered mark A now I gotta get my mark B and I gotta get my mark C they both go on each side but how do we get that all we gotta do is do the multiplier times height so uh, two and a half times my multiplier for uh, for 22 is 2.6. So 2.6 times uh, 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 the multiplier. Anybody have that? Did you say you were gonna round it up to three? No, on, only for your shrinkage. Oh, okay. Only for your shrinkage. That's a good question though. But again, all, all we, so all, it would be only uh, for your shrinkage. For this one, we would do exactly what it would be right here. So, uh, so 2.5 times 2.6, uh, what do we have? Anybody have? 6.5. 6.5. Okay, thank you. Six point five is what we, we would add. So now I would I would deduct from twenty from uh, twenty four and uh, and nine sixteenths. I would deduct uh, six point five, so it's six and a half. So again, this would be what 18, 18, uh, 18 exactly, because this is pretty much uh, half right there. So uh, eighteen exactly. I would go down this way. So eighteen because it's only about a one sixteenth of a difference. So I would leave it at eighteen, and then I would add the other way. So here I would deduct, and here I would add. So now I would add my uh, my uh, five sixteen. So uh, my six uh, six point uh, five. Uh, so that would be uh, 30, 31. thirty one. So thirty one would be my my marks right there for this right there. So I'm gonna come over here and actually do this right here. So uh, that one was uh, eighteen, and then this one was thirty thirty one. Good idea is to always mark these, especially the other marks. Go all the way around because you have a tendency to lose these. And then you're, uh, again, uh, no, oops. Uh, normally you would do these with pencils, makes it a lot better. But right now for uh, instructional purpose, it makes it a lot clearer for people to see it. Uh, you don't want to leave stuff like this out in the field all uh, marked up like this. It doesn't look very professional. So you want to make sure that you uh, use pencils. It's easier to erase right here. Uh, we do have different benders. We do have uh, the half inch bender. We have the uh, half inch bender. We have a three quarter bender. Uh, this one happens to be ha have a broken shoe right here. So it's a very important to make sure that we do not leave the benders like this because they have a tendency to uh, fall. And they, this what happens, they, they break like that. So you don't want to make sure that you protect them. Whenever, if you are going to leave them, uh, you leave them facing this way. That way in case it falls, it's the, this guy is the one that hits right there. So it has a tendency to do that. Uh, that's one of the reasons why these guys break. And again, it's kind of really pretty close to uh, impossible to make some really uh, uh, hard, uh, Especially difficult bends with this like that so make sure that you have you protect your benders again uh, very important that you have your you uh, make sure that you uh, take good care of them because you know again you're going to use them quite a bit so you have a half inch three quarter and a one inch EMT so again the half inch three quarter and one inch EMT now let me flip over the these right here just to show you something uh, this one the half inch doesn't show anything else but uh, the three quarter uh, so this one doesn't show any but three quarter it, you can bend a half inch rigid and with a one inch, you can bend in uh, three quarter rigid. So uh, it is very nice. Now here, it does have some nice markings. I actually drew it right here, but it's actually, uh, you guys can see it right here. Uh, if you, uh, again, uh, you normally, this is the arrow. You normally bend the majority of almost all your bends are gonna go off that arrow. That's the one you're gonna be using right here. This is called the hook. Again, you, you put your conduit in here. This is where the, how the conduit actually slides in here. You just slide it in there. 
into your position. Again, for some reason, people have a hard time putting that conduit in there. So all you gotta do is put it in there, slides in there, and you and you got it into position. So here again, uh, the majority of times you're gonna be doing most of your bends off that arrow right there. Uh, here you have a back-to-back, -back. see that little notch, this little groove right here? This is uh, actually, it's supposed to be bent. They all have it, uh, every single one has it. So here, this one has this notch right here. Uh, this one has it right there. So they all have that little groove, it's part of it. This is for the back-to-back. -back. That's when you're doing two backs, uh, 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 you know, back-to-back uh, -to, -back to each other right there. So then you have your, uh, your star. This one we're gonna be using today, the star is what we use for the I'm sorry, uh, the back-to-back -back is a star. Uh, that notch is what we're gonna be using. I'm sorry, I kinda went backwards. So the back-to-back -back is that star, and the, that notch is what we're gonna be using right now is for the, is for that three-point saddle. So we're gonna be using that uh, that notch right now for your three-point saddle. That's the middle bend that we're gonna be using right there. So again, if you notice, you have a 10 degree, a 22 degree, a 30 degree, a 45, a 60. Now your your conduit, the bottom of your conduit should always touch this bottom part of this, not, not up here, but down here, it should, when you face it, it should be down at the bottom, down here, again, not up here, not in the middle, it should be right at the bottom of all of these right here. That's where your, your uh, the bottom of your conduit should face right there. So right, right now we're gonna do some bend according to what we have uh, done right here. So uh, when we're doing a 45, uh, the first one doesn't really matter. Again, I can face it here, I can, I can face my pipe here, or I can face it the other way. It's not gonna make a difference which one. Uh, which way I face it. So again, as long as I put it right on that uh, on that notch that I had right here, we're going to be okay. So I, again, it's up to you which way you want to bend the first one. So this one, uh, directional wise, it's not doesn't make a difference. Uh, so we're going to make our first bend. Again, uh, we are doing uh, uh, this one. The very first one is going to be a 45 according to what we had uh, written up there. So my very first one, I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom of this. Hits again. I go a little bit past because it has what's called spring back. So you go push it a tiny bit back and it's gonna bring it right back to where uh, the 45 looks like. I'm on off by a little bit right there. Is got You got yourself a 45. Now, pressure is very important. No matter what I do, I cannot take out the pressure. I gotta make sure this conduit does not move, stays in the same location at all times, or else you're gonna have issues with stuff like that. So you gotta make sure that you, uh, that you maintain your constant pressure. Now to do my next bend, all I gotta do is uh, lift it up, push it in, just push it in and slide it all the way across and make sure that I flip it over. I got to make sure I flip it. So my obstruction is right here. So now I have my bender facing my obstruction. That's for the main bend. So again, it was right here. You push it in. Now, if I were to bring it here and I try to do this one, that would be an issue because now that my, my obstruction is here, that would become a bit, very bad issue. And a lot of people have a lot of trouble with stuff like that. So again, this is where my, uh, my bend was at. I just... Flip it, turn it, and I and I can go ahead and uh, bend. Now, very important thing is, uh, if you don't mind putting the uh, setting right here, right here, so you can see again. Uh, you you have to make sure right here that you got to make sure that this guy lines up exactly all the way across with the edge right there. This has to be nicely go from the top right here, if you can see it uh, uh, from right here all the way across, and it's got to be nicely lined up. It, and let me show you what a what a bad bend would be like that. See how that looks all twisted. See how that, you're able to see that? Uh, again, you have to make sure that you line it up nice and neat to get everything all nice and straight right there when you're doing your bend. That becomes very, very important or else you'll get what's called a dog leg. So even, even like that, even when you do a lot of stuff like this, still you might get a dog leg, but again, uh, uh, it's easier to fix little dog legs than, uh, than big dog legs. So here we go, always important to check. Again, I'm, I'm keeping constant pressure to make sure this guy don't move. And if I let go, see what happens, this guy moves. I gotta make sure that I keep my constant pressure, bring it back into a nice uh, position right there. And again, now the first one was 45, the next two, according to what we said, we, we were gonna go 22. So 22 and 22 will bring you back to 45. So I'm gonna go 22, right there at 22. Again, uh, spring back a little bit. Now, again, I cannot just go in here and do this bend like this. I actually have to physically take out this pipe. So my bend, my last bend right here, I have to physically take out the pipe, grab it from the other edge, and then bring it back in here. And again, I'm using the arrow to do these two bends. The first one I used the notch, and now these two I'm using that arrow again. Again, I gotta make sure that my bend uh, has a nice, nicely lined up. Oh, it's very important that that it keeps it uh, nicely lined up. See how it's nice and neat. Again, you don't wanna have this because you're gonna have a nasty bend right there. So you gotta make sure that you have a nice lined up bend right there. So here we go. I'm gonna do my, uh, my next bend again at, uh, 22 again, just go right back to my 22, uh, right there. So 
So now we're gonna try it out. It might be a little bit off again. Uh, sometimes you have to tweak things out. I mean, sometimes you have to things for a while, you have to tweak things out. But again, should give you the same distance. This is my edge. This is 24. So again, my beginning of my pipe should be right at that edge right there. And it should land right there. See where, see the, the middle mark? lands right in the middle that's my middle mark that i marked right there and again it gives you a nice clean bend uh again it might be a little raised over there but those are simple little things that you can fix i that's how so if i did not take the shrinkage into account this would have moved my my uh uh my middle spot would be moved a little bit right there and again it will still work but again you want to make sure it looks nice and professional nice and set where it's supposed to be and that's what you want to do when it comes to the three-point saddle. Again, uh, very simple, height times shrinkage, uh, height times multiplier, and that's it. Uh, same thing, we're going to be doing the four-point. Uh, you're going to see that it's almost exactly the same thing. Uh, height times shrinkage and height times multiplier. Same thing we take into account. And it's about as simple as you can get. Uh, very easy, uh, very easy to practice. Again, uh, so uh, anyway, so uh, hopefully you guys learned from it. And uh,